So here we are once again talking about the Ryzen 5 5600X. This time we're looking at overclocking. And if you haven't yet, I would hit that sub button down below because while I'm almost through talking about the Ryzen 5 5600X, there's a lot of other tech launches that have been happening this fall. And I truly do intend on uh, taking a look at several other tech launches that have been uh, big ticket items provided I can ever get my hands on them, which might have to wait a little while. But if you haven't already, sub down below in case you wanna see more coverage of the 5600X or other Ryzen CPUs or GPUs that are currently coming out or even already out. Now normally with these Ryzen processors, I've done an overclocking video on the stock cooler, but with the Wraith Stealth Cooler, what I found in my preliminary testing was basically the Stealth Cooler is already being pushed to its sort of max with the out of box settings, just everything set to auto. So I'm not gonna be doing anything with the stock cooler in terms of overclocking, but what we are focused on today is if you have a really good air cooler or even a, just a solid air cooler like the Fuma 2 that I'm running on my 5600, X right now, how much can you get out of the 5600X once you have plenty of thermal headroom? Now in the past, this has been a little bit tricky to talk about because with older generation Ryzen parts, specifically Zen 2 and Zen Plus parts, those CPUs were already pushing their cores to almost the breaking point out of the box where if you just let Precision Boost Overdrive do its thing, you were probably getting the maximum amount of performance, certainly on the single threaded side, but even on the multi-threaded side, Precision Boost Overdrive was doing a great job of pushing the CPUs right up to the limit and there was very, very little headroom in there for uh, custom overclock across all cores. Whereas uh, you would be giving up with an overclock across all cores, you would often be giving up some single threaded performance because PBO often was pushing these single cores well above what you could actually get with an all core overclock, at least at reasonable voltages. But with more headroom available for Zen 3, especially with the 5600X, it actually opens the door back up for an all core overclock that also does not sacrifice anything in the single threaded side of things. So for example, if you're just running a single threaded task with PBO enabled, you're gonna get about 4.6 to 4.65 gigahertz out of the box for the 5600X. Now fortunately for me, I picked a voltage here to sort of start and run with of 1.304 volts. And my thought process there was I basically wanted a voltage I was comfortable with running a CPU like this at 24 seven usage. So 1.304 was kind of my preset max voltage. And from there, I went about trying to find the highest available clock speed that this CPU would run stable on Cinebench R20 for at least a 10 minute stress test. Now it is worth noting the only other settings I played around with other than voltage and the actual core multiplier was turning off AMD's cool and quiet, as well as playing around a little bit with some load line calibration. And I set that around medium because I didn't want to go too crazy with it. I'm not really trying to get a crazy overclock on this thing. I'm just looking for solid performance and hopefully performance improvements from the out of the box settings. Now my first run was at 4.7 gigahertz and that actually went just fine. So out of the box, it was very easy to already come out and beat the auto settings. But then I went ahead and jumped up to 4.725 and Cinebench actually also passed that one just fine. So we went to 4.750 gigahertz and once again, with my settings, yeah, uh, this uh, thing actually passed that test. So we were up to one gigahertz over the out of box clocks and that's across all cores with the thermals being very manageable in the low 70s. Now I did actually go for 4.775 gigahertz and unfortunately the 5600X at 1.304 volts did not make it through that stress test. It did start the stress test and actually didn't even crash the entire system like Ryzen has sort of been known to do in the past but it didn't pass the stress test either. So I would call 4.750 gigahertz stable, at least on my particular chip. But if you're lucky, you may get up to 4.8 gigahertz at a similar voltage without a whole lot of problem. And where this is really appealing to people is people that are upgrading their system that already has a pretty robust cooling solution because you're not gonna have to replace that cooling solution and you can get better than out of box performance with a solid cooler like the Fuma 2 on the 5600X. Now, if you're somebody that's building a brand new system, I 
I don't know that I would suggest spending a whole lot of money to get a better cooling solution than the Wraith Stealth Cooler because frankly, as long as you have decent airflow in your case, the Stealth Cooler is going to do just fine and you're getting very marginal returns on your investment. So something like a $25 to $35 air cooler might be worth it just to get those temperatures from the sort of 80 degree range that the Stealth is going to run at to maybe in the lower 70s while staying at stock speeds. But if you do already have a cooler, then running your 5600X or possibly even something like your 5800X if you have it. I haven't tested this CPU out, but I suspect it's going to be a similar type of a situation. If you have a better cooler available, there is a little performance left on the table by AMD in case you're willing to jump into the BIOS and play around a little bit to milk out just a little bit more performance than comes out of box. But this was totally just my experience with the 5600X and overclocking this CPU. So of course, I am very curious for those of you out there that have already snagged one of these Zen 3 parts, what was your overclocking experience? If you have some, let us know in those comments down below just how well your specific chip overclocks. And of course, if you like the video and you want to see more like it, give this video a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.